And there's a dot or a cross. Is that a dot or a cross? Who says that's a dot? Have we? Okay, let's let's see if you're right. So, right hand, check. Thrust, check. Up. Feel, north to south, check. Carrow, out the board. Therefore, it must be a dot. Okay, let's do the same here. North to south, thrust down, must be into the board. And there you go. Now we have a generator. And you know what? If you used your left hand, you would get one of going in the opposite direction too. If you used your left hand motor rule, you would get the opposite. That's where the Faraday's yeah. negative comes in. So how are you going to remember when to use your left hand and your right hand? I want you I want you to think of a mnemonic. Who's got a mnemonic? How would you know when to use your left hand for a left hand for a motor and your right hand for a generator? <laughs> can anyone think of a cute? The only thing I can think of is all comes before M. Left hand motor. It's not a very good mnemonic. That's all I've got. Maybe you could. How do I know if it's a motor or a generator? Okay, what will they show you if it's a generator? They will show you that someone is turning this. They will show you the way, and they show you like this, that it's turning that way. So now you know, there's no battery attached to it, therefore it must be a generator. If it's a battery, it's normally a motor. Unless you're charging the battery, I've never seen that in the exam. No, that would be so totally confusing. It was a theater motor. Okay. So now you know Fleming and the rule, right hand generator rule. And normally at this stage, <laughs> do something you like uh, say, if it's a motor, which is your feel finger? And what are you going to do? Your motor feel finger. <laughs> and then Kyle's got his right hand, but that's wrong. <laughs> so Kyle, you've got to use your left hand finger. Okay. Okay, I want your generator thrust. Which hand are you going to use? Right hand thumb. Now I'm going to ask you, now I want your motor current. <laughs> okay, and you're going to go left hand and you're going to show your current. Right, so then everyone's rude to me. Thanks, I don't mind, I've got fixed it. Okay, so, okay, so then if I say, show me your generator current, what are you going to do? You're going to take your right hand and you're going to get your current <laughs> finger. Okay, so that would be your motor current, that would be your generator current. Okay, now you're going to remember that. Maybe you don't need to be Well, Aiden, if this makes you feel any better, it was about grade one when my teachers finally figured out which hand I wrote with. I wrote so badly with both <laughs> that for two years they tried, okay, please, let's write tree. Okay, that's with my right hand. Now let's write tree with the left hand. Not much difference, okay? So, so, I was a really confused puppy. I didn't know my left or my right. Still, still. Anyway, that's, that's how confused I was. Just say that again. I'm grade 12. I'm supposed to know. <laughs> okay, but it didn't take you three years to figure out which hand you wrote with, did it? Um, okay. Now, I just, I have to...
move on. I'm sorry that I'm doing all the talking. But here is where I need to introduce a concept. Um, let's just try to clean this up a little bit. Okay. Now, what was this? What were these two things, these two wires called? They were called the commutators. And then what was this thing called? The brush. The brush. So the brush transfers or takes away energy, depending if it's a motor or generator, from the commutator. So your brush supplies energy to the computer if it's a motor or takes energy away or electricity away if it's a, if it's a generator. Now, did, and you notice that it sparked, right? Every time this turned, it sparked. Because every time, it, as it turns horizontally, it, it breaks, it, it no longer touches, and when it touches again, it sparks. So alternating current motors and generators spark a lot. Now there is a way to get rid of those sparks and it's to do this. Instead of having a brush like that, you have a ring with a wire and you have a second ring like this with its own wire and then you have your brush. You can have your brush on opposite sides like this. Now this ring goes all the way around, it's a ring, so it looks like this in three dimensions, it's a ring that looks like this, and the brush looks like that. So as it turns, does it ever break away, is there ever a break? Is there ever a time when the, the brush is not touching the commutator? No. So if we have two rings, this is what is called an alternating current commutator. Now, a DC commutator looks like this. In a real motor, this is what it looks like. You take one ring, like this, and you take another ring, like this. Half a ring. You have your brush there, and you have your brush there. And that is what a DC, that's a DC commutator. This is an AC commutator. What's the difference? And this, I guarantee you, will come in the exam. If, if it doesn't, well, it's come in every exam. It will come in the exam. So just do this. Is that now a DC or AC commutator? It's got two halves of a ring, right? So this is a DC commutator. Now do this. Put two, make two rings. You got one, you got another. And then those things attach to your. So, what is this? Is this AC or DC? AC. AC. Everyone happy with that? DC, AC. DC, split ring commutator. Split ring. AC, slip ring. Plural. Split ring singular, slip ring plural. Okay, so I'm going to ask you questions. What is this? DC. It's DC. And is it a slip or a split? Split. Split ring. Singular or plural? Singular. 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 What is this? AC. AC. What is this? Slip Two slip rings. Now, I know I'm covering some ground, but let's just show you. 
you remember last time we showed you the wave that was generated with our big galvanometer? And it was a wave that looks like this. Here's time, and it was a wave that looked like that. This was positive voltage, this is negative voltage. And he has time in seconds, he has volts in volts. Why is this alternating current? Because the voltage is going from north to positive in the right direction. Then it comes, the current goes to the north. And then the current runs backwards, it faster, faster, slows down. That's what this is describing. Watch it again. Let's say right is positive. Here's your electron, alternating current. Starts at naught. Gets faster and faster. Maximum voltage. Voltage comes to a stop. Then the voltage turns around. Gets faster, faster, faster comes to a stop. That's alternating current. Your, your electrons just vibrate like this. They don't go anywhere. So this, this graph will be in your exam. AC wave. And we call this a sine wave. Now, who thinks they would know what a DC wave looks like? Here's time. Here's the uh, so this is AC, here's DC. Same thing, volts in volts, time in seconds. What do you think direct current looks like? How do you think the graph's gonna look? We generate them more or less the same way, same apparatus, we spin a magnet or a coil inside a magnetic field. Got an idea? Love. Did you work that out yourself? Yes. Fantastic. So you're just taking that, you're inverting it, and it looks like this. Now that one, instead of going that way, that one it goes, still carries on on top, and then that one, which was there, goes there. And there's DC. Voltage. Now how would we describe the, this, the motion of an electron? Start signal. It's pushed to go only right. Does it go faster? Push more, 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 push, 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 slow down, slow down, stop. Then it gets to there. Now here comes the electromotive force again. It's pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, gets faster, 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 stop. Push, push, push. Notice my direction is only to the right. But it's pushing and then relaxing, pushing and relaxing, pushing and relaxing. So this is now what a DC wave looks like. Who's got questions? No questions. Now, only the stuff that I'm teaching you is in the exam. All the rest of the stuff in your textbook you can forget about. If it's not in what I've taught you, don't even bother with it. Here's a sign. My... Okay, are we ready to sing the song? So this is how you sing it. My slip ring makes me behave like a DC wave, like a DC wave. That's how it goes. So it's again, my split ring 
makes me behave like a deep sea wave, like a deep sea wave. Everyone got that? Now, second chapter, second verse. My slip rings make me behave like a side wave, like a side wave. Okay. Now let me demonstrate the second part of the song. My slip rings make me behave like a sine wave, like a sine wave. So why do we go one way and then the other? Because in an alternating car it goes left and it goes right. Okay, so let's try that. My slip rings, plural, make me behave like a sine wave. Like a sine wave. I didn't hear any singing. Let's try again. My slip rings make me behave like a sine wave. Like a sine wave. Now let's put the two together. Whew. In the mask, it's quite hard sometimes to breathe. Okay. My split ring makes me behave like a DC wave, like a DC wave. My slip rings make me behave like a sine wave, like a sine wave. My split ring makes me behave like a deep sea wave, like a deep sea wave. My slip rings make me behave like a sine wave, like a sine wave. Here we go. Be safe. So now we've covered much of it, most of it. <laughs> okay, for the benefit of those who weren't here, what do we call this voltage? When it's at the crest. And the cut. We call that? We call it? V max. So what is this voltage here called? V max. Now there's somewhere in the middle, not in the middle, but somewhere on average, you see the voltage goes from naught to a maximum. What do we call this voltage here? We call that V root mean square. Just say root mean square, everybody. Root mean square. What does it mean? It means the average. All happy? <laughs> because if you were to work out an average and this were 4 and this were north, what would the average be? 2, two but it's not. With a sine wave, it would be closer to 3 would be your V root mean square. Who can tell me why? Look at the area. Um, it's got something to do with there's more of it there's much more of it at the bottom than there is on the top so a sine wave has got more at the bottom than on the top the top has only got a small top big bottom okay and that's why they call it the root mean square 
What is the voltage that comes, what is the V root mean square that comes out of our mains? South African mains is, what's the voltage? V is 220 volts. Stop record. What is the V max? So on, on kind of average, our voltage is 220. But what is Vmax? We worked it out. Well, it was about 310, right? 311. Our Vmax is 311 volts. How did we work? What was the formula? V root mean square is Vmax over the square root of 2. Okay, do a little sum. Let's suppose that this max is 4. The average would be 2, but the root mean square would be... Can you work out what the, what the root mean square would be for 4? So what is the formula? How do you change? Oh, you don't need to change it. You just put in 4 over what the square root of 2 and that gave you an answer of? 2,83. Which is 2,83, which is quite a lot bigger than 2. Because the bottom of the sine wave is quite big. The bottom half of it. Most of it's at the bottom. Okay, so there, so our, our average voltage, if you took over time is going to be this, 2,83 volts. Lovely. Now let's do it a little bit more difficult. If I told you that in America, their mean root mean square is equal to 110 volts, what is their Vmax? Give that a go. Try and calculate that. Find their Vmax in America because their average voltage that comes out of the mains is 110. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 